We ended the previous screencast with the question, what does a steep temperature gradient imply? Good insulation or bad insulation? The answer is good insulation. If I have a jacket on, I want to, to be a big difference between the cold temperature outside my jacket and my warm skin. So a steep temperature gradient. Now we're going to do an example. So we're going to calculate an average heat conductivity for a sandwich material. And this sandwich material consists of copper and paper in layers like this. Uh, and we're going to calculate uh, this average both in both directions, across and along these layers. And uh, we have some facts here. The paper is 0.2 millimeters thick. The copper is one millimeter thick. Heat conductivity is 395 for copper and 0 0.18 watts per, watts per meter and Kelvin for paper. So let's start doing it across. So across these layers. Well, what do we know? Now we know uh, that the temperature difference from this side to the other side must be the sum of temperature differences over copper and the temperature differences over uh, paper. So it doesn't matter how many we have of these layers. We can just calculate with one paper layer and one copper layer. If we add more, it's just similar, uh, just a thicker medium. So the important is how thick is the paper in relation to how thick is the, the copper. So if uh, delta T equals delta T copper plus delta T paper, we can rewrite that because we have these equations uh, for conductivity as Q divided by A, uh, the thickness divided by the conductivity for the average and for the different materials. And we get this. And from this, uh, since Q and A must be the same if we have this kind of setup, area of the paper is the same as the area of the copper. And if at steady state Q is the same, uh, so we can take away that and we get the lambda average, the average heat conductivity as the thickness in total divided by the sum of the thickness of copper divided by the conductivity of the copper plus the thickness of the paper divided by the conductivity of the paper. And if we put in the values, we get an average conductivity of 1.08 Watt per meter and Kelvin. OK, so that was fairly low and much closer to the paper than the copper. What about if we do it along instead? Well, then the temperature on this side is the same. We can assume at least. Uh, if, no matter if we look at the paper or the copper, and the temperature on this side is also the same. So the temperature difference is just one, uh, but the amount of heat that is transported in the paper and the copper might be different. So we can say that the heat transfer Q equals Q copper plus Q paper. And again, using these equations for conductivity, we can rewrite that as the area times the conductivity times the temperature difference divided by the thickness for the average, for the paper, and for the copper. So we get this. And now the temperature difference is the same. So we can take that away. And the area is not the same because if you look from this side now, the area, well, we can calculate for a specific length, but the length will be the same no matter which um, material we look at. So what's important now is the thickness. So the area of the copper uh, divided by the total area is the same as the thickness of the copper divided by the total thickness. So uh, we get this. And we, if we enter all the numbers, we get an average conductivity of 329 watts per meter and Kelvin, a lot closer to the copper. So a sandwich material has totally different uh, characteristics in the different directions, just like wood has. 
wood breaks easier in one direction than the other.